We're recording now. Uh, welcome uh, and uh, thanks, Juan Brown, the tackle thief. Blanco Lirio, what, uh, what's going on out there? Hey, look, at uh, it's snowing. We are getting some desperately needed precipitation here in Northern California. We're at the 3,200 foot elevation on Banner Mountain. So after another very hot, dry summer, we get to keep our houses for another season. We didn't burn down and we're getting rain and snow. Yeah, I saw your Facebook post. I mean, those look like big, heavy snowflakes. They're big. Yeah, it's it's accumulating quick. We're talking an additional two to two feet today. So maybe a total of four feet of snow in the uh, high country from wow. this last series of storms. Wow, that is that is awesome. I, I love that picture, boy. That's uh, that's some white, fluffy snow. But it's got to keep it up all all winter long, you know, t- in order to do to make a dent in the drought situation here. It's going to take a lot of this. Yeah, water levels, you're still at a big deficit, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're we're real low, very low, all the reservoirs. Well, maybe this winter it'll help the, the fire situation a little bit with uh, some moisture and some snow out there in the high house years. Well, we'll see. And each year is different. <laughs> each year comes back with a vengeance. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining me on here, Juan. I appreciate it. You know, we mm-hmm. did last month we talked about the September general aviation fatals, and I do my little chicken scratch sheet. Yeah, per- I'm looking at it over here. It looks like what did you get? 19 for the month of October. Yeah, 19 GA fatals, and we'll just kind of zoom through that. But I'll put that up on the screen right now for people to see. That's the 19 planes that we lost in the month of September with the end numbers, and their names, and some month of October. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, month month of October. So, uh, but before we do that, I want to talk to you about this meteor that you on your channel. You know, <laughs> the meteorite the- story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott Manley, a uh, YouTuber, has checked in and and has dismissed the whole thing uh, right out of hand. Investigators are looking, and get this: NASA and um, uh, and somebody else uh, from the from the government is coming to look for this meteorite in this house if this is in fact the case. So there's a two week investigation going on and they're scrambling around looking to see if they can find any sign of an actual meteorite hitting this house but because of of reasons we've discussed uh, on the channel there. And Scott Manley sussed out that usually these meteorites are dead cold by the time they hit the ground. So the chances yeah. of starting a house fires where they would have to hit something in the house to cause the house to catch yeah. on fire. Well, I saw the video you posted on, on your channel. I encourage people to go back and watch that because it is interesting. I, yeah. I'm on the fence. I don't know really, but the, the in-flight footage that you captured from all those sources of the thing falling out of the sky, that's, that's pretty compelling too. Don't you think? Yeah, but it's hard to tell really where that thing landed. And uh, it could have been a hundred miles away. We were just as humans, we're not very good at judging the distance of these things when they, come fireballing out of the sky like that yeah yeah well i saw the one uh i saw the one in uh, arizona um i don't know if you've seen that before but that that one uh meteor crater out there it missed the gift shot by like a hundred yards <laughs> isn't that amazing every yeah. time i fly over i point that out look how close it hit that come to hitting that highway man yeah it's it's <laughs> close but stuff does fall out of the sky and hit the earth because whenever i fly out over the desert southwest there's thousands of little crater impacts mm-hmm. where you can see at some point something has hit that and made a, a perfect dimple in the surface you can see where yeah. something hit the earth at some point yep yep we're under attack all the time by junk coming out of the sky. Uh, it's like I said, it's amazing, and they never hit an airplane. That would be a really weird it's story. Probably some California moonshine guy that blew up is still in the middle of the Could night. Be. Yeah, he's had a few propane tanks hanging around there, so yeah. no talent. And sadly, the the folks had no insurance because they could not afford the California insurance premiums because yeah. of the wildfire situation out here. So he's out of everything. Oh yeah, it's horrible. Totally horrible. Well, uh, keep us updated on that. I'll, uh, I, I thought that was a very fascinating video you did yeah. right on, on uh, telling that that story. For whatever caused it, I, I mm-hmm. don't know the answer to that. Let's talk about general aviation. What do you think about the month of October? Well, it's better than September. What did you have for September? It was almost one a day in September, right? Yeah, September was almost one a day. We ended up with 28 GA fatals in September. October, we're down to uh, 19, which is still higher than what I'd like to see. But uh, the point I want to make here is that uh, AQP for general aviation has been my vendetta here. These are mostly scenarios. And you being an airline guy, you're used to scenario-based training, which is a huge differentiation. My thing for AQP for general aviation simply says that we need to find the scenarios that are hurting our pilots and brief those and educate ourselves and go practice those scenarios so that when they happen to you in flight, you're fully ready for it. AQP 
at the 121 carriers is totally different because they actually have data and we don't have data, but we do have a pretty good general idea of what these scenarios are that uh, keep on killing us. And that's why I'm advocating that people at least, I mean, it's for free. There's nobody charging you any money. You might as well take a look at these and go out with a CFI and do a little bit of practice on these things. What, what do you think? Right. What's the BFR requirement these days for private pilots? We get certified as private pilots and we enjoy the freedoms and privileges as a private pilot, but we don't have any mechanism in place other than the old school BFR program, which can be as something as simple as a hamburger with your buddy flight instructor to really keep you current and proficient. And how do we how do we incentivize people to to remain current and proficient? Um, is it through insurance premiums? Is there a program we can set up to reduce our insurance premiums? Or there, there'll be a big pushback if there's an attempt to regulate or force uh, private pilots into a formal recurrent training program, I, I would suspect. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, we started this uh, new Facebook group, AQP and Coffee, um, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and it's gone really good. I just posted a couple of days ago, I asked some people in there, what their continuing educational requirements were for the profession that they were in, like uh, doctors and, and professional engineers and accountants and CPAs and paramedics. Everybody was very happy to jump in and tell me what their continuing education requirements were for their profession and their continuing education testing requirements. In order to be a paramedic and maintain status as a paramedic, you have to have not only the education, they test you. So all these people in all these walks of life all have to go through continuing education and testing to requalify you to continue to be a paramedic for the next 12 months. All of aviation is set up that way, too, for our airplanes and our Garmin systems and everything that has to do. I certify that this propeller has been inspected and is mm -hmm. safe for the intended flight or for, or for, for this flight or for this annual. Everything uses the words I certify, except in general aviation, the pilot only has to have a flight review, only has to be done every two years, and there's almost nothing to it. But that's the difference between a profession, a professional in a profession, and the rights and privileges as a private pilot. It's by design, not professional. It, but how can we inject some of that professionalism into the private pilot level? Well, we, and we need to, because remember, the whole thing revolves around the government catchphrase, public safety. Mm. As soon as we encroach on public safety, even though you're a private pilot out there flying around for fun, you crash your 210 into a school and kill 11 children, public gonna... safety, we're going to hear about it. And we've come mm -hmm. very, very close a lot of times. Remember the Colgan crash? I've got a Colgan video coming out. The knee-jerk reaction by Congress after the Colgan crash invoked huge, huge, huge impact. All it's affecting of, us today is part of the whole problem with what's going on with the pilot shortage today. The whole Colgan thing is crazy, and that's because Congress enacted those rules, not Got FHA. Involved. Congress stroked yep. the pen and made those rules because of that crash. We're that's what we want to avoid. That's what we want to avoid. Would it be worth opening the conversation and talking about creative ways of voluntarily talking about a flight review or something in advance so that we don't have to do this knee-jerk knee -jerk Congress reaction and make a whole bunch of new rules? Would that be worth it? Yeah, well, it, it's worth pursuing. It's, yeah. it, it's going to be pushing a rope uphill, but... Well, the whole the whole thing has to do with the word certification. So I made up a graphic. I'm going to put it up on the screen here. But let's pretend like I came out to California again, and I flew with you in the Husky. Let's mm -hmm. say we went out on a Saturday morning, and I flew with you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take your logbook, and I'm going to assuming you can actually fly, which I am not quite convinced yet. I, yeah. <laughs> but I can tell you after we fly, I'll know whether or not I want to use these words. I certify that Juan Brown. Mm -hmm. So here's the graphic. I'm going to read it to you. This is a sample, mm -hmm. and it says not for use. It says, I certify that I have given Mr. Juan Brown the holder of pilot certificate number one, two, three, four, five. The ground and flight training in accordance with 6156, that's your flight review, and an annual AQP flight review. The specific scenarios unique to Juan's aircraft and typical flight that we covered were, and here's your AQP numbers. Here's the ones that I went over and we practiced and we reviewed and I checked to make sure that you were totally good on all those. The rest of them apparently 
don't really apply to you and your little husky. That this annual continuing qualification recertification includes 2.5 included 2.5 hours ground instruction, 2.2 hours flight time, and 11 takeoffs and landings. Now this is all totally made up. This is not real. I certify that I have trained Mr. Brown to proficiency and have evaluated his continued airworthiness in each scenario and find him competent and qualified to continue to operate as a GA pilot in the national airspace system. This continuing qualification recertification expires November 30, 2023. Now, the words in there, re requal. Tell me about your airline requal program. Oh, yeah, you got to requal and you got to pass or you don't go. You, you, it's a what they call a jeopardy event. And if you eventually can't pass, you, you're no longer employed. Right. So what would happen if we thought about the concept of recalling your private flyers on a voluntary basis where you didn't have any threat? Well, and there it's trained to proficiency is the, is what they call it in the airlines these days. You can always train the guy up to proficiency in as long as it's able to, to be done in a reasonable amount of time because it's on the company dime in the private pilot case it could be you know up to the private pilot individual which can open up a whole can of worms are you going to get cfis that want to abuse that system and just milk the guy for additional training Mm. and then what is the liability going to be for the flight instructor to sign that off each time is it no different than signing off somebody for to take a private pilot exam well, everything that the flight instructor currently does uses the word I certify, whether you're whether you're mm-hmm. certifying them ready to take a knowledge test or you're certifying them ready to solo or you're certifying them ready to take a practical test. They still have to use the words I certify mm-hmm. as a part of being a CFI. The words I certify are definitely in there. They're in every single aspect except the flight review. The words I certify are not in 6156. Isn't that re- really weird? Hmm. Yep. Yep. For the recurrency training. But again, that's the difference between professional piloting and private piloting or general aviation piloting. Yes. And, right. and then also, we don't want to turn this into a Dan Grider work program where it's just simply Dan Grider's AQP program on steroids for everybody across the country. But it is a good starting point and concept. I, I think the incentive to stay alive in your aircraft should be very high. Yeah. You should want to enjoy the rest of the, your time with your family and not get killed in your airplane. Wouldn't it be worth it to, to spend an hour or two on a voluntary basis and go over the maneuvers and pick up uh, pick up one of these stickers? I'm not selling these. <laughs> yeah. I'm just it's saying- like a Dan Greider work program to me. Yeah. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be cool if you if you took a voluntary couple of hours and you flew and and you're good for the next year. And you got to see if I had to actually use those mm-hmm. words. I certify that Juan Brown knows what he's doing. You get somebody to sign off that they evaluated Juan Brown and he's good to go. When somebody puts their name in your book and says, yes, I think you're good. That's a big deal. And or goes and gets another rating within that time period. That's one of the few things that we do to stay proficient is, is continue our ed- continuing education and getting more ratings. Yes. And, and, you know, that still continues to s- suffice. I'm talking about for the average private pilot that's had his right. license for 20 years. And just been doing the same lunch run on Saturday afternoon. Or he gets his buddy to pencil whip a flight review, which happens 99% of oh. the time. Mm-hmm. People pencil whip a flight review. They don't, they don't ever, ever even meet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Looking at your October statistics here, how many of these would you figure loss of control, lack of proficiency, would you think? Um, I would say a bulk of these are all AQP maneuvers that were preventable. Mm. Every, every, almost every single one of them. There's a couple in here that uh, that are not, but uh, almost every single thing, one of these would have been preventable if the pilot had been trained on it and ready for it. Uh, they did not have to die. So um, we can't eliminate all of them, but I'm proposing that we could eliminate a lion's share mm-hmm. simply and easily simply with free internet education and get your CFI to sign you off uh, a sign off exactly like I've got on, on here. This sign off that I built is not illegal. And I would definitely put this in your book legally as a CFI. If we flew together and if you could fly, which I'm still on the fence on whether or not you could do it or not. <laughs> that or not. But you you probably could. Uh, you're I've seen you. You're you're fairly good in that that husky. Um, I would be, I would be happy to give you this endorsement. Is this 
an endorsement. Well, not just pencil whip. It will have to actually go perform the maneuvers. We'll have to actually go do it. And I'm going to yeah. give you an engine failure on takeoff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a reject to take off. I'm going to give you a defined minimum maneuvering speed event where you got too slow on the traffic pattern. I'm going to give you all those so you know what to look for and how to prevent dying. Wouldn't that be cool? Yep. Yep. That's a good fight. It's worth pursuing. Well, I think it's worth talking about. And I appreciate mm -hmm. you coming on uh, my channel uh, with me to talk about this. This is the start of a conversation. I want to make it clear. I'm not advocating for more government regulation I hate government regulation like anybody else. I just think that if we don't think about this and on a volunteer basis, Congress is going to get involved. We're real close to Congress doing another Colgan thing. We're real close, Juan. Mm, yep, yep. And insurance premiums are wiping us out on the other end. Yeah, yeah. So you get the big advantage of uh, reduction in insurance premiums and lower costs all the way around. But the big advantage is... You guys that are out there flying airplanes, you also get to stay alive. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a huge. That's a huge advantage. I would think that understanding these scenarios and going through this stuff would be a big advantage. And look at the cost that we incurred to install ADSB in all airplanes. I mean, guys are spending between two and eight thousand dollars in the last five years to put ADSB, and we did it. How about if you invest four hundred dollars per year in additional non-required flight training and certification. That's really, I mean, for the most part, for most guys, for less than 500 bucks, you could get with a CFI someplace and go out and spend a half a day and really let him work you hard on the AQP maneuvers, which are not the ACS maneuvers. And let well, him the, Yep. And the other challenge, of course, is going to be find the qualified certified flight instructors to do this. We already got an instructor shortage. That's kind of part of the bottleneck of the whole pilot shortage right now. Yeah, it... It is, uh, and asking flight instructors to to go do this. But, I mean, uh, flight instructors are already doing flight reviews. There's no mm -hmm. reason that you can't take the, the flight review. Tighten it up a little. Tighten it up a little bit, make it a little mm -hmm. bit more often. And mm -hmm. I'm recommending you use. Length. Once a year you're recommending? Once a year? I, sort of I, think, I think just like everything else, every one of those professionals that wrote in always had at least annual continuing education at least some of them six months or nine months but everybody at the absolute minimum even a bartender has to have annual continuing education and testing mm -hmm. to maintain status as a bartender isn't that crazy yep yep yeah food services mm. food services so yep. all right well uh you got anything else you got any other crashes you're uh, things uh let's see um oh yeah what was i gonna say uh the Triple seven out of uh, well, the triple seven out of uh, Buenos Aires was a great example of an engine failure on departure and just a textbook uh, emergency returning back. The one update on that was that it does appear that they treated it as a stall surge, so they retarded the throttle back to idle and just returned back with that uh, number one engine back at idle. I don't believe they shut that engine down, but they did have a major engine change on that on yep. that airframe yep. and on the Piaggio remember the Piaggio yep. crash uh, off of Costa Rica yep. an important update on that and this is something I've learned on the ADSB exchange uh, data where they show the ADSB data they can also show in some cases what is set in the FMS or the flight management system of the right. aircraft and a very astute uh, Blanco Lirio viewer pointed out they said look the pilot set the altitude window with the autopilot on to zero. And he left it there all the way until he was within 700 feet of the water. Wow. And then he did a panic pull to try to escape and recover. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I have not followed that one hardly at all. So you're, you're way ahead of me on that. I've been so snow covered up in GA. Yeah. I can, that, can't uh, possibly keep up. Yeah, and, and we got uh, some real interesting ones here too. Yeah, and uh, you know that Beach Sierra up in uh, New Hampshire the other night uh, was mm. definitely a failed rejected takeoff. Two guys in there, and they they made a takeoff on a long runway, but everybody heard that engine popping and sputtering, going all mm. the way down the runway. Mm. It wasn't making power. They still had plenty of time to chop the power and land on a available remaining runway. They didn't do it. They never rejected their takeoff when they knew good and well that engine is is a sick engine. They re, they they skipped it. Yep. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. So anyway, well, brother, I appreciate it. Good to see you. I'll get this uh, up and on the air. I'd, I'd like to probably consider doing a monthly uh, recap with sure. you. 
uh, on yeah. here, just kind of talk through some of this kind of stuff. And uh, uh, people, uh, people like seeing you. I hate to admit that, but uh, they they enjoy seeing your ugly mug on here. So, uh, oh. well, it gets it done quicker. You can just post it on this side, and then yeah, <laughs> the editing's done. Yeah, <laughs> good. That's it. Yeah. All right. Always All good right. chatting with you. Keep up the fight, and uh, let's try to keep keep a little more, add a little more professionalism to our daily private pilot flying. Let's do it. See you okay. here. See you here. See you here. <laughs> this channel, not that channel. <laughs>